Okay, and then we just need to drag it actually to the bottom of the screen instead of being at the top. So that's pretty simple. Just move it along like that. And then also move those anchor points down to the bottom too. Oh, whoops. Okay. Yeah, something like that. And then uh, we can actually go back and just type a few more things and increase it to a size that makes more sense. So something maybe like, eh, I think something like 35 will do for both of these. And then after that, what we need to do is go to this second one that's on the bottom here. And we're going to type tap to restart. So that's sort of going to be the text that's showing up at the bottom here. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Okay, perfect, something like that. And then the top here, we can also just maybe make that 40. And actually, I'm going to go into the font here and change the rendering mode just to see if we can get something to look better or to make it look a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't make it look too much better, but you can just mess around with these because you can see that it still looks a little bit fuzzy. Let's see how it looks when I actually play. I think it looks all right like this, but yeah, you can just mess around with that if your font is not looking quite right. Okay, but we can go back and just get rid of that there. And then what we need to do is we need to find this and actually disable it. And, oh, actually, we only do this for the bottom one. So click on the bottom one here, the one that's at the bottom of the screen, and then mark, unmark that checkbox so that the text would disappear from the screen. So remember that this text object still exists. It's just that the text component of the text object is disabled here. So the text will not render to the screen. And we actually want to give these texts names. So we can just rename the top one to winner text. And then we can rename the bottom one to loser text. And we also want to create some new tags for these. So we want to create the winner text tag and the loser text tag. Okay, perfect. And then obviously we want to assign the correct tag to each of these. Okay, before we move on, I have to make a quick correction here. So these are actually supposed to be called uh, restart text, not loser text here, because it's just talking about, it's just saying tap to restart. So we can rename this tag by, well, just removing it. Uh, Oh, well, we can just add a new tag of restart text and set that to it and then go in here, move it to restart text, and then we can remove the loser text. Okay, perfect. So now this is called restart text as it should be. And next up, what we want to do is we want to go back into the game script and at the top, we're going to add using unity engine dot UI. So the user interface, because we want to have some code for that. And next, what we want to do is find our update. And right below that, we want to make a winner event. So we can call this string player winner. And then this means that someone has won, so we want to set game over to true. And we want to be able to display that text. So what we can do is game object dot find game object with with tag of the winner text. And we want to get the component of text and set enabled to true so then it will actually show up and then for the loser text or i mean restart text sorry about that what we want to do 
is copy this even a third time because for the restart text we want to set enabled to true as well and then for this one we want to also set the actual text that we see for player winner and then also say is the winner all right so let's go back in and we can make sure that both of these are not enabled currently and yeah so we can see that only this player can play and this player you can't just switch between them so you can have more of a normal chess match. I know everything isn't perfect yet, but we are getting pretty close to the end of this tutorial series. However, we have no way of really activating the winner sort of function right now. So what we want to do is we want to go inside the move plate script. And inside of here, we need to find the on mouse up again. And we need to see if it's an attack piece and also if the piece it's destroying happens to be the king. So how we can do this is see if the uh, controller, and we can see if the name of the chess piece that it's actually destroying is equal to the white king. If that's true, then we can get the component of the game and initiate the winner function with black. So the black player would be the winner if the white king is getting destroyed by this move play, technically speaking. And then we can just copy and paste that and then just switch out the names here. All right, perfect. So now we actually have a way to have one player win and lose. So let's just try that out real quick here. Okay. So the white player can go, and I can move some pieces out. OK. And yeah, you can see that it says white is the winner, and tap to restart. All right, so now we really have the full game completely playable. I know there are a few missing features in this game, but those are more of extra things that you can add yourself, such as the pawn being able to move uh, two spaces instead of one and also other features like multiplayer. So we might be able to get to those at some point, but this is really the core foundation of the project. And this is as far as I have actually gotten with the project myself. And yeah, so you can actually restart here and everything like that. So the only little thing that we need to change in order for us to actually get this code sort of ready and everything like that for uh, different devices other than the computer is we want to go into our canvas and set the scale mode to scale with screen size. So this is important for if you're exporting your game to your phone or something, the text will actually not look quite right. The pixels will actually be changing because of course every device has different resolutions and everything like that. So I'm not really going to show you how to export this to your phone so to speak, or any other device, but I can kind of give you a basic outline of what to do. So you should go into your phone, preferably an Android device, and uh, make sure that the developer settings are enabled. That'll depend on your uh, specific phone how to do that. And then after that, you can go to File, Build Settings, make sure you select Android, and also you'll want to add the open scene here. And this currently isn't loaded for me right now, but after you have Android selected, and you can, then can select build and run right here. And then after that, it should send the game to your phone because you need to have your phone connected to your computer. And then you can just save the name of the APK file that it creates. So an APK file is sort of like what an app is run on usually in a job, in a uh, Android device. And then the app will actually appear on your phone. So you will have the app on your phone, not through the app store or anything like that, just of course exported from your PC basically. 
and then you can just try it out, test it out, and everything like that. So yeah, there are tutorials on YouTube about how to do that, so I highly recommend checking those out. And if you have any features that you'd really like to be included in future episodes of this series, let me know. Or if you'd even like me to continue this series, because like I said, this is as far as I've gotten, so please just let me know what you'd like to see if you'd like to see anything with this uh, series going forward. So thank you.